Most people in life are learning, how do I make a life worth living when my retirement is not looking like it's going to give me a living? And what I usually encourage people to do is try to figure out how to make a career move that allows them the income that they will need to handle their needs going forward. Stupid people invest in stupid ideas. They think, well, I'll sell some dogs and then I'll be okay. No, you won't. Because it takes a good eight, nine months, I think, I don't know, to, for a dog to go through a cycle to produce puppies. And then you have to pretend and pray that they'll all make it and stay. And then you've got to find the people who want to buy them. And if they don't want to be bought, then you're stuck with puppies. So that's not really a viable business today. A viable business is selling a product that a lot of people want, are willing to talk about, and are willing to take. That is a viable business. A viable business is selling a service like music lessons or Japanese lessons or something that provides you the income for your, well, service, your skill sets, your abilities. And if you're losing your eyesight, then maybe you're not having enough carrots in your diet, is what my late mother might say. But it also could be that you refuse to take health care products that could help you in that way. You see, you have to have discipline in order to live your life for God. You have to have discipline in order to have your life be in line with Christ. And you have to have discipline to be willing to say, well, I'd really like that over there, but God is saying, no, that's not right for me. And that means that I have to trust in God. And if I don't trust in God, then isn't that a little odd to call myself a Christian if I don't trust what the Lord is telling me? That the Lord is telling me that that, that there is not healthy for me and it's being proven to me that it's not healthy for me, but I'm still in it because I'm too lazy to go out and win it or I'm just not ready to let go of my version of God. My version of God is that I get to win anything I want in life and I'll be just fine. God's version of God is I've got lessons to give you and those lessons are mine. And no human being has the right to give you a lesson at any moment of your lifetime. No human being has the right to steal from you what I've given you from my houses. And no human being has the right to take from you what is precious to me. What is precious to me is not only your loins, but what you do with them is precious to the Lord. And when I talk about these things, I'm trying to impress upon young girls that sometimes they're too young for someone who's older than them. And sometimes they're not mature enough for someone who's right for them. In life, we have to look at what is right in the world. Human trafficking is immoral, yet people sell people short every day. They want to have the girl that wants to play, but they don't want to marry her, and they don't want to have her in bed with other people, but they pretend that. They want to flaunt her. They want to tout her as a trophy that they've won, that they've stolen from someone. And what they're really saying is, I've taken this child of the Lord from God's house. What an immoral man to do such a thing. But a moral man waits patiently through all the changes, all the life lessons, all the waiting, all the time for the one that the Lord has planned for him. And the one that the Lord has planned for him is sometimes a shock and a surprise because she's nothing like what he expects himself to like, and yet she's everything he needs, everything he wants, and everything he longs to have in his arms. That's the difference between a moral man and an immoral one. A moral man will patiently wait for everything to be somewhat right in order for life to be exactly right in the way that Jesus Christ wants it to. An immoral man will jump the gun, will race into something that's not right for him because he's losing something in his life that he's not good at losing. And what he finds is a replacement that looks just like his late wife. What a fool he is. To not take the time to process, to not take the time to grieve, to not take the time to, time to honor a mother of his children. How dare he do that before God? Now I can talk about experiences, I can talk about people, I can talk about lessons that I've learned, I can talk about things that people have shared in confidence, but I don't usually do that because that is immoral. But there are people who are snoops, who will pick up cards on tables, who will ruin relationships, who will destroy and divisiveness, and openly they are not in God's house. A parent is immoral when they don't believe that a child has a right to their life. A sibling is immoral when they think they have rights to talk to anyone about another sibling's love life. 
We have to be careful about what we do in the world today before God because God is raging with an illness called COVID. He is raging through the world saying, you've forgotten who I am today. I'm going to remind you and your family every day that there is a God, there is illness, there is death, and eventually you come back to me.